What tools and platforms do 10x data scientists use? What should I learn as a noob data scientist? How do I become the greatest of all time? In this video, we'll show you tons of different technologies used by data scientists. While some of them might be familiar to you, many others you'll hear for the first time. How many of these tools do you know? But before starting, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Now, let's get started with the first step in our roadmap, data collection. All right, so. You want to develop a project that goes viral so you can look like an all-star and get a job at Google, Meta, Microsoft, or any other company you wish to sell your soul to. Yet, you're probably still downloading the Titanic Survival or California House Prices datasets and building boring models off of these boring datasets. Put yourselves in the shoes of a hiring manager. How do you think they'll react if they saw a Titanic project on your resume? They will probably just toss your resume in the, uh, electronic trash. According to the eye tracking study being done by Ladders, recruiters on average look at your resume for only six seconds. Nothing screams noob like having the words Titanic dataset on your resume. So obviously pick a more interesting dataset. One way to do that is to scrape your own data. As a data scientist, you can basically pick any coding language that gets the job done. But most of the time, it's going to either be Python or R. We'll stick to Python in this video. First up, Beautiful Soup. It's a famous web scraping library that you can use to easily scrape data from any website that allows this behavior. It's a famous one, so definitely learn it. Also, you can do this with Selenium too. It was originally developed for browser automation and testing, but for web scraping with Python, it's the next most popular thing after Beautiful Soup. Scrapey, want to scrape a ton of data? You can scrape data with Scrapey too. It's generally used to do large scale web scraping. Requests. Requests generally work with other web scraping libraries. It is used to make HTTP requests to make your data calls. ParseHub. ParseHub makes automation easier. It's a point and click scraper. So with just some entry level HTML knowledge, you can become a successful web scraper. API. Web scraping is cool and all, and maybe it makes you feel like a hacker, but most big companies won't let you scrape their website to build models. You'll need to collect the data in a cleaner, more legal way. One way is through APIs. You should definitely learn how to use APIs to grab data. Almost all companies have APIs for external and internal use. It's the standard way of moving data around. Fast API. Fast API, like its name, is designed to be faster, which allows for faster data transfer. It is typically used for applications that require low latency and real-time data. RESTful APIs. RESTful APIs are used to exchange information between applications by using HTTP requests, get, post, and delete, by following the architectural principles of representational state transfer, REST. A REST API is an architectural style for building web services. However, REST Full API is an API that conforms to the principles of REST. Postman. Want to test your APIs out manually? Postman is a tool for testing, building, and designing API calls. It allows you to send requests and see the response from the server. Ready to collect the data? Here are two APIs where you can start collecting data for your next project. YouTube API. You can access YouTube content like videos, channels, or playlists using the YouTube API. You can also manage YouTube features like comments or do searches and browse for videos. Twitter API. Like YouTube API, with the Twitter API, you can access data from Twitter, like profiles, tweets, or search results. You can also post tweets and send messages by using Twitter API. You'll get a front row view of the dumpster fire that is now Twitter. Data manipulation and cleaning. All right, you got your data. But now what? If you look at the data, it's probably super messy or in some weird form. We need to clean it. In this section, we will focus on libraries that will help us to reshape our data from something that looks like a mess to something we can actually work with, like data frames, arrays, and lists. Let's start with NumPy. NumPy is used to do mathematical operations and is famous for its arrays, which are widely used in machine learning too. It will help you manipulate data with ease since it has lots of pre-built functions to make work easier. Pandas. Need something better? Pandas offers series and data frames as their data structures, which have become the most popular data structure for data analytics. Pandas has an array, no pun intended, of predefined functions that make data manipulation a breeze. Both NumPy and Pandas are often used together, with Pandas handling heavy lifting and NumPy being the backbone to performing the calculations. Most of the time, you won't even know you're using NumPy because you're calling functions in Python. PySpark. Now let's talk about PySpark. PySpark is the Python library for Spark programming. It allows you to interface with Apache Spark using the Python programming language. 
In PySpark, data manipulation is also performed by using data frames, which are similar to data frames in Pandas, but Spark is much more efficient and faster, having been made especially for large datasets. You can also use PySpark's machine learning library for advanced data manipulation and analysis tasks like feature engineering, feature selection, and model evaluation. Overall, PySpark provides a powerful platform for data manipulation and analysis on large datasets, which makes it popular for data engineers and data scientists. PySpark is primarily an enterprise library, so you probably won't get to use it for personal projects unless you're rich. Next is the Don Juan, a great lover or a great friend. Whatever you need, SQL becomes. You should be familiar with SQL because that skill set is listed in literally every data scientist job description ever written. Being an SQL god is a necessary evil as a data scientist. Why? Because anything that deals with data also deals with databases. It's often faster, easier, and more efficient to use SQL to access your data instead of using Python. Here's a few SQL engines worth knowing. Do you need to know all these engines? No, but then you won't be the greatest of all time. In reality, companies typically use industry-grade SQL engines that you won't be able to learn on your own. So our advice? Just pick a free one and start to learn it. They're all basically the same anyways. Excel. Nice. Save the best for last. Good old Excel. It really is a useful data manipulation tool that includes a wide range of functions and features too. If you love to use Excel, feel free to stop watching this video and unsubscribe from this channel. We have nothing for you. ETL and scheduling. An important step in the data science process, at least if you are in industry, is extract load transfer, ETL, and scheduling, which is a fancy way of saying, let's move our data from one place to another, clean it up, and then move it to another place for analysis. This process isn't necessary if you're doing personal projects, but you'll most certainly deal with this step if you are working at a large company. ETL and task scheduling are commonly performed using programs like AWS Glue and Apache Airflow. These tools allow you to automate data pipelines, which will take care of cleaning and storage. This is usually a data engineering task, but data scientists need to at least understand the process. Clean data doesn't just appear out of thin air. PSA announcement. Please treat your data engineer with compassion and care. Let's see the important tools of ETL and scheduling. AWS Glue. AWS Glue is a rather new technology that promises to automate everything in the ETL process. What is it exactly? This means that you can monitor and check in on your ETL process. It'll do the transferring and moving work on your data, and it'll monitor the process. You can do similar work with AWS Lambda. So choose your tools carefully. Airflow. Airflow helps control the flow of data through the pipeline, also known as scheduling. It ensures that everything runs smoothly and on schedule. You can automate tasks, observe the pipeline status, and even get notifications if something goes wrong. Airflow was started in 2014 by Maxime Bouchemont at Airbnb. The Airbnb OG data science team is said to have come from Facebook, many of which came from Google. Again, thank you, Fang, for making our lives easier. Data modeling. At this time, you've collected and cleaned your data and stored it in your databases. Now it's time to finally do some real work. Here are some frameworks and libraries for data modeling. Stats model. Stats model is built on top of NumPy and SciPy and provides different built-in functions for the estimation of different statistical models and tests. It's a great library for statistical modeling. Scikit-learn. Sometimes you want to do more than just statistical modeling. Maybe you want to build machine learning models. You definitely should be familiar with Scikit-learn. It has a lot of different techniques and algorithms predefined for you. It's the number one library for data modeling and can do most things stats models can do, but in addition, you can use it to build ML models. TensorFlow. TensorFlow is a popular open source library, which is created by Google and has lots of updated features. TensorFlow allows for easy implementation of machine learning, including deep learning neural networks networks and is available in a wide range of platforms and devices. XGBoost. XGBoost is a really good technique to use in machine learning, especially if you want to win Kaggle competitions. The Kaggle Avito Challenge first place winner Owen Jong said, when in doubt, just use XGBoost. And Liberty Mutual Property Challenge first place winner Ching Shan Wan said, I only use XGBoost. Theno is a numerical computation library that enables fast computation on CPU and GPU architectures and is used for numerical computation and deep learning. It is developed and maintained by the machine learning group at the University of Montreal. Fast AI. Fast AI is an open source deep learning library 
created by Jeremy Howard and Rachel Thomas in 2016. Why slow AI when you can fast AI? Google Cloud AI. It's not necessarily a framework or library, but let's talk about Google Cloud AI, which is a platform offered by Google Cloud. Google Cloud AI includes cloud-based machine learning and AI services, like natural language processing, computer vision, speech recognition, and more. They can be used to build, deploy, and scale machine learning models in the cloud. The goal is to make model building and deployment super simple. AWS SageMaker. Amazon has the same attitude as Google. They love data science products, especially machine learning. AWS SageMaker is a cloud-based platform for developing, training, and deploying ML models by AWS. It's like a Jupyter notebook on steroids. Data visualization. So what if you don't want to build a model? Do you just want to make your data look pretty? Here are a few libraries and tools to help. Matplotlib, the de facto library for creating plots in Python. The styles and names come from MATLAB, an old programming language for OG data scientists, before the term data scientist was even invented. It was super popular in the 1990s and 2000s, but the language is dying because Python and R have taken over. Also, array indexes that start at 1? Yikes. However, it's still popular in the research domain. Looking at you, grad students. Seaborn. These graphic styles are kind of ugly. So if you want nicer looking graphs, try Seaborn. This is a library that works on top of matplotlib and focuses on making your graphs pretty. Plotly. Here's a more modern graphics library. Plotly is an open source library which helps you create interactive graphs. This library is also available for R and Java 2. Tableau. Tableau is one of the most famous, but also most expensive tools out there. It allows you to connect data from different sources and then create and share dashboards through different platforms. Tableau is considered a business intelligence tool. Not all data scientists have the skill sets to create dashboards. Leave that to the BI developer. Click. Similar to Tableau, Click offers a wide range of features such as interactive visualizations and guided analytics, and also does not require users to have any prior knowledge of coding or data preparation. Click is the poor man's Tableau. Power BI. If you have a Mac, you can skip this section, because Power BI is not available for Mac users. It is a business intelligence tool by Microsoft that helps you create dashboards. It's really popular these days and is starting to take quite a bit of market share away from the other BI tools. Google Data Studio. Google Data Studio is a web-based data visualization tool that also can take data from different sources and can visualize its reports through different platforms. It's great to use if you analyze Google Analytics data. Model deployment. Okay, you've survived until this section. You're doing good, uh, or you like to suffer. Models need to run, and sometimes they run on a web application in production. This is often one of the last skills a data scientist learns. Traditionally, it was the job of software developers to put models in production, but a GOAT data scientist can do it all. Here's some frameworks to use. Web application. Flask and Django are both open source web frameworks for the Python programming language. Let's start with Flask. Flask is a micro framework that makes developing web applications easier. It gives a lot of freedom to developers to design their applications as they want. It's super lightweight and easy to use. What is a micro framework? It's a minimalistic web application framework that provides basic web development tools. It is designed to be fast and allows developers to quickly create web applications. So it gives a lot of freedom to the developers to design their application as they want. Django. Django is a more complex system, which has many built-in functions like an admin interface and template engine. It is well-suited for larger projects. For example, Stratascratch is built off of Django. Cloud systems. Now that you have your model on a web application framework, you need to serve it to users. It's time to run and host your application so users can access your work. Unless you are spinning up a server rack in your garage, you will need a cloud system for deployment. Here's a few platforms Forms you can use. AWS Cloud. AWS is one of the most widely used cloud systems, especially in companies that use AWS technologies and tend to use them all together. Hybrid cloud sucks. Google Cloud. Google Cloud Platform, or GCP, is a cloud computing program that provides a wide range of services, including computing power, storage, databases, and machine learning. A common differentiator between AWS and GCP is that GCP includes a lot of native AI and ML tools for your projects, while AWS lacks them. However, AWS is reliable and still holds the number one position in cloud systems. Microsoft Azure. Do you know what the computing power behind ChatGPT is? Did you say Microsoft? Well, Microsoft didn't invent it, but it's getting big on ChatGPT. Microsoft Azure, or Windows Azure previously, Microsoft's public cloud computing platform. Similar to GCP and AWS, Azure is a cloud computing infrastructure aimed to service enterprises. It has what is said to be the best support for companies, which has them ranked as the number two cloud service behind AWS. Python Anywhere. 
Python Anywhere is a web hosting provider that specializes in hosting Python applications. It provides a range of services from basic web hosting to more complex cloud-hosted applications. It's an infrastructure as a service provider. What is an infrastructure as a service? It means that it provides a platform for users to run and manage their Python applications in the cloud. Heroku. Heroku is a platform as a service provider. It supports multiple programming language, including Python, and allows developers to easily deploy, manage, and scale their applications without having to learn AWS, GCP, or Azure. In summary, AWS, GCP, and Azure are all full-featured cloud computing platforms. Python Anywhere and Heroku tools focus on helping developers deploy and manage their web apps easily on the cloud. Final words. There you have it, most of the major technologies you would be exposed to in your data science career. So, as the GOAT data scientist, do you need to know all of these tools? No. The company you work for will have already decided what tools you will need to use. You'll learn them on the job, but you have to start somewhere, right? What tools do you start with? Well, that's up to you. I recommend starting with the tried and true tools most data scientists use. SQL, Python, the various libraries for Python, AWS, GCP, Heroku, pick one, don't learn them all. Focus on learning tools that help you get the job done. It doesn't matter what the tools are. More than anything, you are learning how to learn. The more you practice, the faster you will be able to pick up new tools as they come along. Good luck.